I am on about day 780 of NoFap, which means I haven't masturbated in 780 days. I haven't masturbated a single time. And by the way, this whole duration, I have been single as well. Now, in all the videos I've made about this, one comment that I get quite frequently is something along the lines of, have fun with your prostate cancer, Luke. And I wanted to address that issue in this video, whether there is a relationship between uh, masturbation and prostate cancer. So I have done extensive research on this topic and I've even talked to my own doctor and I have a lot to share to you in this video. And if you are interested in NoFap, I think it's worth watching till the end. You might find some tidbit um, of knowledge that could be beneficial to you. This video is going to be kind of long, one thing I do with longer videos is I often watch them in 1.5 speed. You know, it just makes it a little easier to watch. This video is going to have three parts. In the first part, I'm gonna talk about what my doctor told me and what I've learned from other doctors. The second part is going to be discussing and looking at the research done on this topic. And the third part is going to be me sharing some personal thoughts and also bringing in some other resources. And I'll talk about something like, is edging bad, uh, bad for the prostate, for example. Okay, so to start with, about six months ago, I talked to my own doctor about <laughs> NoFap. And I saw my doctor for an unrelated issue, but at the end of the appointment, I said, oh, by the way, doctor, I haven't masturbated in a year and a half. I just wanna make sure that that's perfectly good and that there's no issues there. And my doctor told me, yep, that's perfectly fine. Nothing to worry about. And I even asked him again, like, are, are you sure? I've heard some things about prostate cancer. You're sure there's nothing to worry about? And he assured me that there was nothing to worry about. So that was great. And the same doctor actually years ago, maybe about seven years ago, I was having some sexual dysfunction issues. And this doctor actually encouraged me to stop masturbating. <laughs> so uh, my doctor is very on board with NoFap. One thing I encourage you to do is next time you see your doctor, ask your own doctor. Don't trust anything you see online. Okay, and now I wanna share with you some information from some other doctors. Here's a statement by Richard Wassersug, PhD prostate cancer expert and faculty of medicine at the Department of Urological Sciences at the University of British Columbia. He says, there are no really good objective data that I know of showing a causal link, positive or negative, between ejaculation, ejaculation frequency and prostate cancer risk. So there you go. There is a guy who, he's a prostate cancer expert. He lives and breathes prostates. And he says with the data we have now uh, that there is no causal link. And he made that statement in 2017. So quite recently. By the way, the sources for all these things I'll put in the description. And here's a last quote by a doctor. Someone asked their doctor about prostate cancer and they said, the doctor explained that glands are not muscles and do not need exercise. He put exercise. <laughs> glands secrete fluids all on their own and our manual intervention is simply not needed. Therefore, avoidance of ejaculation is not a problem whatsoever. Now I'd like to talk about the research on this matter. Here's a statement by the website Your Brain on Porn, which is a very reputable and credible website. Scientists have actually measured many separate factors and their relationship to prostate cancer. Ejaculation, intercourse frequency, marital status, number of sex partners, and cases of sexually transmitted diseases. So far, study results conflict with each other on almost every factor, and the medical profession does not consider ejaculation frequency or infrequency to be a risk factor for prostate cancer. And um, I, I, I've looked at a bunch of these studies. And one really interesting thing is that there are actually three studies that say the more someone masturbates, the more likely they are to get prostate cancer. So that would be an interesting twist of fate if it's actually the more frequent masturbators who have a higher chance of getting prostate cancer. But here's one study I'll show you. Frequent sex and masturbation in 20s and 30s linked to higher prostate cancer but risks diminish with age. Interestingly, um, this study found that men, if they masturbate, I think in their 50s, that lowers their chance for prostate cancer. 
but for younger guys, masturbation increases their chance of prostate cancer. So if you actually look at the studies, the studies contradict each other and are all over the place in regards to ejaculation frequency and whether that affects prostate health. However, you might be asking, what about that one study that kind of created this whole rumor that uh, masturbation is this health tonic that's good for prostate cancer? Um, do you have anything to say about that study, Luke? Okay, so the first thing about that study is that it wasn't scientific at all. It basically asked older men to guess how many times they ejaculated in their 20s and then it compared that number to their prostate health um, at the current time. And the study didn't account for lots of factors. For example, it didn't compare masturbation versus sex. It was just ejaculation frequency. So it's best not to take that study too seriously because it's not very scientific. One article here says this about the study. A potential confound is that healthier men may ejaculate more, at least with a partner, so it just makes sense for ejaculation frequency to correlate with better prostate health. So it might not have anything to do with masturbation, but healthier men tend to have sex more in their relationships, and healthier men tend to have less prostate cancer. And the very interesting thing about the study is that the researchers did not conclude at all that masturbation was good for the prostate. They actually concluded that this is worthy of further research. They did not make any conclusions. So here's a really interesting quote about that. The popular press has made a lot of noise about isolated aspects of results that make good headlines. For example, in one study, men who remembered ejaculating more in their 20s had lower rates of prostate cancer. This was touted by the press, not the researchers, as proof that frequent masturbation will prevent prostate cancer. Really interesting, huh? And then that spread like crazy. It went on like Men's Health Magazine, Cosmo Magazine, and suddenly everyone thought that masturbation was this like special health tonic that was necessary for good prostate health. And it's, it, 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 this whole rumor was started by the press, not at all by the researchers. It's called fake news. So the bottom line with all these studies is that the study results conflict with each other on almost every factor. There is no evidence that frequent masturbation is healthy for the prostate, and there is no evidence that not masturbating is bad for the prostate. But more research needs to be done on this matter. Now I'm going to share with you some personal thoughts on this topic, as well as bring in some other resources. And I'd like to start with talking about how once I had a Skype client, I do Skype coaching with people who have porn addictions or are trying to be better on their nofap journeys. And the Skype client told me that he had been doing nofap for quite a long time. I think his streak was over a year, but he said he was feeling lots of tension in his testicles. That uh, concerned me. And if there's ever anything that concerns you, I encourage you to go talk to your doctor. Uh, a couple days ago, someone actually commented that their, <laughs> that their semen turned green. So you know, weird stuff, go talk to your doctor. There's no substitute to talking to your doctor. Another message I'd like to give is don't be too rigid about no fap. For example, that client who had all, these, all this tension in his testicles, um, for him, I think it would have been a good idea to try masturbating once and see if masturbation would have um, cleared up his tension. But um, interestingly enough, that, that client he just wanted to keep a streak. He didn't even want to try masturbating once to see if that would help. So I think some people have this like obsessive attitude about like semen retention. They have to keep all their semen in. And I more encourage you to have more of an attitude of exploration and experimentation. And for things like if there's lots of tension in your testicles, that's, that's <laughs> maybe try, try masturbating once and see if that clears it up. Masturbating once for those serious no fappers isn't that big of a, of, a, of a deal. And I think having that more exploratory mindset is much healthier in the long run to be a successful and healthier no fapper. That being said, if you do allow yourself to masturbate once, do not look at porn. You know, porn is, the, the science is out about porn and porn is definitely bad for you. One risk with that is that if you allow yourself to masturbate once, it might be really easy to rationalize looking at porn too. So if you're a porn addict, if you decide to masturbate once for whatever reason, 
you know, be really vigilant to not look at porn and also be aware of the chaser effect, where if you masturbate once, if you consciously are like, all right, I'm just going to masturbate once, you might the next day or later that night want to masturbate again. It's very easy to want to masturbate or look at porn again once you've given once. So take this advice if you are, especially if you are a porn addict with extreme caution. Any possible concern that you have, I encourage you to see a doctor as soon as possible. And also listen to your body, tune into your body. What feels best for your body? Because one thing is also, I think you no know, FAP is maybe optimally a, a gradual transformation. If someone's been masturbating every single day for 15 years, and then suddenly they learn about no fap and try to like not masturbate at all for a year that possibly could put some tension so i do think you know it's important to listen to your body be in tune with your body and for some it might be best to you know start with a week of no fap and then two weeks and then a month and slowly you know work your way into longer and longer no fap streaks as your body adjusts just a thought maybe it's completely fine to just go straight into no fap. This is all a new frontier. Like there are no 100% answers in this field. But just a thought is for some people, a more gradual metamorphosis in their no fap discipline may be ideal. I'd like to talk about edging now and if that could potentially be um, bad for the prostate. Here's a quote that I found on the website reuniting.info. I once asked a medical doctor who had practiced sacred sex techniques for years about prostate trouble and ejaculation. He said, I don't know of any research on this, but I have a strong opinion that the big consideration is whether there is a sense of control, frustration, or holding back involved. If one is moving energy well, then congestion does not happen. I really think that one shouldn't edge. Edge is the practice of like masturbating and getting close to coming, but then like at the last second stopping and never finishing. And then maybe, you know, the tension dies down and, you know, get close again and then never finishing because that just might put pressure or stress on the prostate. I'm not sure. This is just something I'm thinking and it seems like other people are thinking this too. I personally don't edge and it's not something I recommend. Here's another quote that I found on reuniting.info. My gut feeling is that practices that create intense arousal and don't lead to ejaculation are potentially harmful over the long haul. So again, I don't think edging is a wise thing to practice. For people who are interested in sexual transmutation, I highly, highly recommend the book Cupid's Poisoned Arrow by Marnie Robinson. I think it's a brilliant book and she also has an amazing website reuniting.info which is where I've gotten you know, some of these thoughts. Something else I found on the reuniting.info website was this quote, no system is going to be 100% practical and applicable to all people. It's best not to get hung up on absolutes and find something that works for you. Plus, what works for you now might not work for you in the future. A major part of learning to manage our sexuality is learning to be responsive and sensitive to ourselves. Like what I said earlier, listen to your body. Not easy, but it's a trap to think that any one model can encompass all of our needs in an absolute, absolute way. And it seems like this just leads to frustration. So I like this quote a lot because it's true. Everyone has a different body. Everyone has different hormone levels. Some people could be outliers. And when making this video, I actually kind of caught myself being maybe too pro and no fap rather than just giving objective truth. My intention is to give the most accurate information and helpful thoughts possible. Just to do a quick thought experiment, let's just imagine that there's this natural bodybuilder. This guy works out all the time and he has amazingly high testosterone levels. Let's also say that he has a very stressful life. Maybe he works 10 hours a day. He has a daughter sick with cancer in the hospital. He's going through a divorce. So not only does he have like really high testosterone levels, but he also has all the stress and tension in his, lives, in his life. Now for someone like that, maybe that could be an outlier where if he's just feeling lots of tension in his body, one or two ejaculations a week could be a good thing for him. 
Now I'm not saying that's true and there's a good chance that's not true, but when making this video, my intention is to tell you guys, try to give you guys both perspectives to get the closest to truth that we possibly can. Because when most nofappers make videos on prostate cancer, they only share the truth that supports the narrative that they want to believe. <laughs> you know, that's kind of how our human minds work, that um, nofappers will only see the truth that nofap is completely healthy and people who masturbate all the time and think not nofap causes prostate cancer will only see the truth of that. <laughs> but the truth is that the best way to live life is to focus on truth and to be critical of ourselves and to not only share the truth that we want to be true. <laughs> so I'm just sharing that perspective that maybe if someone's really stressed or has insanely high testosterone, maybe a fap every once in a while without porn could be healthy. I'm not sure. And just to show the other side of that bodybuilder experiment is that there have been millions of monks throughout human history who have practiced uh, sexual control. And I haven't heard anything about monks having higher uh, prostate cancer risks. But in the line with that metaphor about the natural bodybuilder, monks also live very peaceful lives. You know, they're meditating all day. They don't have all this external stress that can happen in our modern day societies. So one advice that I have for nofappers is I think it's very important to do things like meditate, take long walks, do something like yoga, do calming and grounding activities to just make sure that Yes, you're cultivating your sexual energy, but you also want to stay grounded and healthy in your body. And the last thought I want to share with you is that I saw an article that said, guys today might be masturbating 500% more than how much guys did before high-speed internet porn existed. <laughs> so back in the hunter-gatherer days, when there was no porn, no sexual images being bombarded at us, maybe guys only masturbated once a week. And this whole culture that we live in where it's like encouraged that masturbation is this healthy thing is just backwards how most guys just dissipate their life force into a tissue every single night, every single night, you know, it's not good. Here's what the website yourbrainonporn.com says about this. It's quite possible that our ancestors did not masturbate nearly as often as we do in part because their daily lives helped regulate their urges automatically. They exercised more, had lots of contact with people they knew and trusted, lived on diets free of junk food, weren't surrounded by synthetic hypersexual images, and spent time in nature instead of focusing on computer and TV screens all day long. Normal may once have been quite different, even for those who have never heard of sexual repression. And here's another great paragraph by uh, Your Brain on Porn. According to one of the few good papers on tribal sexual activity, the two tribes studied had no word for masturbation. That's right, these African tribes do not masturbate, but they do marry young. They aren't trying to balance on the brink of an active volcano <laughs> without lots of interaction with the opposite sex. Today, many of us stay single longer so we have a bigger challenge. Guys without partners usually feel better when they stop heavy porn slash masturbation. But after a couple months, if they don't find a sweetheart with whom to enjoy regular affection, even without sex, they might find abstinence from masturbation very tough and need to figure out a porn-free masturbation schedule. Interesting perspective. By the way, yourbrainonporn.com, amazing site and reuniting.info, another amazing site. Lots of the quotes and things that I've shared in this video have come from one of those two sites. Both of those sites have helped me an amazing amount on my journey and I highly recommend both of them. So my concluding thoughts are is that I don't think there's a relationship between ejaculation frequency and prostate health. Like I shared earlier in this video, the whole myth that masturbation was good for the prostate was created by the press. It wasn't a conclusion that the researchers made. It was created by the press and it made a great headline and then everyone <laughs> in our society used it as this excuse to be masturbating all the time. When actually, cultivating your sexual energy, in my opinion, is definitely the way to go. I'm, I'm gonna continue being on NoFap. I'm not worried about my prostate health at all. Everything feels great for me. 
But at the same time, I just want to say maybe things are more nuanced than people often commonly think. This would be an area that it would be nice if there is more conclusive evidence on. But like I said, if you have any like tensions or anything that concerns you, talk to your doctor. All right, so I've put a lot of work into this video. I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Please comment your thoughts below. One thing is that if you're subscribed to my channel, you're not gonna get all of my videos. You have to click that bell icon to see all of my videos. So if you are subscribed, either hit that bell or make sure to every once in a while look through my video history to see if uh, you've missed any of my videos. If you're new to my channel, check out my other videos and consider subscribing. One free way that you could support me that would just take two seconds is you could follow me on social media. I have a Facebook page, Twitter, Instagram, and I would really appreciate you following me on my social media. I share great stuff on my social media, in my opinion. <laughs> and I really appreciate my Patreons. A big thank you to my Patreons. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and have a great day. Peace.